Well, I want to welcome you this morning to Margate Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Chris, and this is our morning service. I want you to open your Bibles to 2 Chronicles and chapter 20. Now, if you can't find 2 Chronicles, just look for 1 Chronicles, and then you'll be able to find 2 Chronicles. Well, I'm kidding, of course. The first time I preached from this passage of Scripture, though, was way back in 2001. And the dark clouds of despair and discouragement and despondency had loomed large in our lives at the time. 9-11, that terrorist attack on the Twin Towers in New York had already happened. It was November. Mugabe had already started his farm invasions and the, the brutal oppression of his people in Zimbabwe. And our lives and our future and our home and Indeed, the, the future of the whole world seemed dark and bleak, much like it does today in these days of the virus and the pandemic. And so I want to bring a message this morning entitled The Valley of Praise. The Valley of Praise. Now, it's the process through which God is taking us to get to the Valley of Praise that I want to deal with this morning. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 26 ends the whole story in a sense by saying they assembled in the valley of Baraka where they praised the Lord. The, the valley of Baraka, Baraka itself means praise. And Jehoshaphat and all God's people were filled with praise because the valley that might well have been filled with their own bodies, the bodies of slain Israelites, was instead filled with the plunder of their fallen enemies. God had performed a mighty, mighty victory for them. And so they praised the Lord there in the valley and then returned to Jerusalem. But to really get the impact of the whole story, we actually need to back up. We need to go to the beginning of the story. A few days earlier, perhaps, reading from the New International Version, verse 1 says this, After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Munites came to make war on Jehoshaphat. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. It is already in Hazazor Tamar, that is in Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord, Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Well, we're responding to a call from the Baptist Union of South Africa uh, for all of our churches to enter into three days of prayer and fasting. And we invite you to do some kind of fast today. Tomorrow, Monday, the 27th of July, we will uh, encourage you to spend uh, as much of the day fasting and praying for our country, for the world facing this pandemic, but also for our Baptist Union churches in South Africa, for all churches and all pastors as we, we try best to restructure and to face this challenge. And so we invite you to join us today and tomorrow. And then on Tuesday, we're going to have a wonderful celebration. We're going to have a drive-in worship time in the evening from 5.15 to 6.15 p.m. You don't have to get out your car. In fact, we encourage you not to. You can wear your mask. Uh, we will have designated parking spaces and we will have worship outdoors on the big screen playing worship videos. So we encourage you to come and join us. But today, let's consider this message, the Valley of Praise. Well, we've just read that Jehoshaphat and the nation of Israel faced a great threat. And they resolved to inquire of the Lord. And this is the starting point of God's truth. You see, it's true everywhere and in all places and at all times. To get to the valley of praise, this valley of Baca, we need, first of all, a great place to start from. Powerlessness, cluelessness, and yet attentiveness. I love verse 12. It says, we have no power. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. This is the greatest place for a believer to start from. The self-help gurus of this world would not agree. In fact, they'd be horrified. 
The world tells you and I that we need to stay strong. Yes, you can. Power thinking, positive thinking. But you know what? Impossible situations like Jehoshaphat faced and that this global virus forces us to face right now helps us as believers to return to biblical dependency. You see, the starting point for all Christians is last place. A place of powerlessness, of cluelessness, and yet attentiveness. Since I have no idea of what to do and what's going to happen, I have no power, no authority, no rights, it seems. I'm left with only one option, and that option is to say, Lord, the ball's in your court. It's a wonderful place to be. Now, is this a biblical pattern? Well, think about the lives of some of the greats of the Old Testament, Joshua. In Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says that the city of Jericho was tightly shut up. And yet the Lord said to Joshua, See, I've delivered Jericho into your hands. Well, Joshua might well have said, Lord, that's not what I'm looking at. And Moses, consider Exodus chapter 3, verse 10, where God said, Go, Moses, I'm sending you. And Moses' response was, Lord, I can't do that. I can't go. Who am I? I can't, I can't, can't even speak properly. Think of Joseph in Genesis in chapter 41 and verse 16, Joseph said to Pharaoh, I can't interpret this dream, but God can. Think of Gideon in Judges chapter 6, where the Lord says, Go, mighty warrior, have not I called you? And Gideon says, But Lord, I, I can't go. I'm not a mighty warrior. I'm the last in my family. My family is the least, and we are the lowest of all of the, the tribes, in a sense. All of these are examples for us today of God's way of thinking. And God says, you're on your own. You're a widow. You've been retrenched. You're feeling isolated, weak, and vulnerable. You're afraid. You don't know what to do. Great. You're in the place I want you to be in. You're in last place. And that's the place on the grid from where I like to win my races. Now, the second thing we need in order to get to the valley of praise is a wonderful principle to stand upon. I want you to look at verses 14 and 15. I love the fact that the Spirit of the Lord came upon this young man and he spoke to the king and to the people. Oh, the importance of the Spirit of the Lord in our hearts and lives in these days. But that wonderful principle to stand on is that the battle belongs to God and it involves positiveness courageousness and stillness a positiveness that says listen everyone this young man filled with the spirit stood up and said guys let's not give in to despair and discouragement let's be courageous and positive don't be afraid or discouraged and then in verse 15 he said the battle is not yours in verse 17 you will not have to fight stillness is this a general principle of Scripture? Well, I'd like to say without doubt it is. We love Psalm 37, don't we? If you look at the first seven verses, verse 7 ends, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. This is what Pastor Bronson was talking about on Wednesday in the midweek service. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 11 says, The tent of the upright will flourish. Well, we are either going to be prophets of doom and gloom or we're going to be spokesmen and spokeswomen of bloom and boom. Let me explain. We speak out the truth that God helps us to bloom wherever he's planted us. And secondly, we speak out that ultimately it's going to be a case of boom, boom. God, Jesus is coming again. God's got this. God wins. Satan the death, illness, hatred, injustice, it's all going to be defeated one day. Like Gary, one of our favorites in MasterChef Australia, after tasting the perfect meal, he often says, boom, and that's all he says. In the meantime, we don't have to give in to a kind of Dutch courage. We don't have to succumb to inertia and a defeatist attitude. You see, this principle that we're standing upon 
is the readiness to face danger and change. And it's the capacity to endure suffering and pain. Dave Coltart is a Christian lawyer and a great friend of mine uh, living in Zimbabwe to this day. And he's one of the greatest examples that I know of, of this patient hope and active courage. He both relied on the Lord. He waited on God. But then he was willing to, be, be, to stand up and be counted in the, in the face of impossible odds and injustices. Don't ever mistake stillness for inactivity. Finally today, to get to the Valley of Praise, we need an awesome person to sing about. And obviously that person for us is the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Look at verses 19, 21 and 22. We sing about his praiseworthiness, his faithfulness, and it brings to us a heart of joyfulness. The verse says, praise him for the splendor of his holiness. That's his praiseworthiness. It says his love endures forever. That's his faithfulness. And they returned to Jerusalem, verse 27 says, with joyfulness in their hearts. The fuel that drives the chariots and the armies of heaven is praise. When God's people bow in humble worship and declare the name of the Lord in praise, then God releases his power and achieves the victory. Now praise must always be focused on the person and the work of of the Lord Jesus Christ and the name of the Lord. Is this biblical experience when we praise God, does the victory come? Well, think back to Peter in prison in Acts chapter 12, verses 5 and verse 12. As the people prayed, God released Peter from prison. Think of Paul and Silas in, in Acts chapter 16 and verse 25, also in prison. They were in a great place to start with, weren't they? A place of powerlessness, of cluelessness, and yet of attentiveness. They then chose to stand on a wonderful principle, the principle of positiveness, courageousness, and stillness. And as a result, they were able to sing about the awesome person, their Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, his praiseworthiness, his faithfulness, and they did it with a compelling joyfulness. O oh, valley of praise. Let me ask you this morning, are you there yet? When you want to see a spectacular view, isn't it true that often you have to climb a mountain? If you want to see the beauty of the sunrise over the ocean here on the east coast of South Africa, isn't it true that you have to go through the night and you have to get up before the dawn? Well, God is taking us through those dark valleys of the shadow of death at this time. And we're being forced to climb steep hillsides of change. But to get to that beautiful view and the valley that is just beyond, the valley of praise, we need to focus on God and trust him. See, the valley of praise is where he releases the power of his victory. God releases his victory when we fast, when we pray, and when we praise. I encourage you as you close. We are going to close our service today at the church. We're going to close with that wonderful song, I Speak Jesus. I encourage you to Google that and to download that video and to just speak the name of Jesus, the valley of praise. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord fill your heart with praise today and give you a heart of joy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.